Welcome to this course on economics Slack. In this short introductory video, I want to tell you about uh, what this course is going to cover, what is economics Slack, and uh, why we care about it. Uh, so this course is going to discuss um, research topics on economics Slack. Um, it's a course that's um, going to be focused on formal modeling. Uh, so we're going, we're going to build and study macroeconomic models, but we'll also try to keep an eye on the empirical evidence. And so we'll discuss evidence that's available. And in particular, we're going to look at um, the evidence um, that we need to justify the assumptions that we make in the model. So we'll always try to make sure that the assumptions that we make are consistent with what we know about um, the real world. So what is economic slack? Um, so economic slack is just um, the amount of productive resources that um, are unused at any point in time in an economy. Uh, so the most famous example would be unemployment. Unemployment is workers who want to work, who are available to work, but who cannot uh, find a job. And as a result, they remain uh, they remain unproductive. But uh, you find economic slack on many other markets. It's not only uh, on the labor market that you're going to find uh, economic slack. So for instance, uh, you can uh, see that uh, in the say like service uh, markets, you very often see slack and you see that slack varies over time. So for instance, Hotel rooms are, uh, you know, sometimes full, but sometimes they are not full, and the uh, occupation rate of hotels uh, varies over time. Same thing with uh, plane, you know, uh, airplane seats. Um, we know that, uh, although it's rarer these days, um, you know that sometimes you have seats that are empty in an airplane, and in fact, the utilization uh, rate of um, aircraft varies over time as well. Um, you see it, of course in restaurants or cafes uh, where you always have some tables or some seats that are empty and sometimes you have more emptiness than in other times. Um, so that's that's another uh, example. But you find, uh, it's like in yet other markets, so for instance, for a market for goods, uh, you find economic slack. So say when you have goods that are produced and cannot be sold and just uh, have to be thrown away, uh, that's an example of economic slack. So say if you have uh, food stuff that's produced, that's put for sale, nobody buys it, it has to be, you know, it has to be thrown away. Uh, that's going to be an example of uh, the type of waste that corresponds to um, economic slack. It's, but it's not only perishable goods. You also find economic slack uh, in um, durable goods. So of course, durable goods are not going to just go uh, bad immediately, but usually if you have a store and they can't sell their durable goods, you know, the durable goods depreciate. So the year after, uh, they have to sell them at a lower price and eventually they'll have to um, toss them out. Um, so that would be that would be another example. Um, so we've seen like market for services, market for goods. You also see economic slack and its effects within uh, firms. So for instance, sometimes uh, you see capital that goes uh, unutilized, although it could be utilized, but because there's um, not enough demand for it, it's not going to be utilized. So it could be you know, entire factories that are shut down. It could be production lines that are shut down. It could be uh, machines uh, in the factories that are used or not used. Um, so that's another, uh, another example. And of course, so we talked about the labor market and unemployment, but even people who are employed within firms their rate of, uh, if you want, utilization or their rate of idleness varies over time. Um, so people do not work uh, at full capacity at all times. Um, and and so, so we know that, I mean, people have a certain number of hours where they're supposed to work. And when there is really a lot of demand, you may work uh, over time. But even when you're supposed to work a certain amount of time, people are most, more or less idle on the job um, and in all types of jobs. Like even if you think about, say, consulting firms, um, when they are very busy, 
consultants are always uh, working on projects, but sometimes when business is slower, you know, they'll take uh, some days off uh, or a week off just because there is not enough uh, business, um, you know, available for them to work. And so this amount of idleness is a manifestation of Slack and is going to um, to vary over time. Um, so. That's what we're going to study in this course. Um, so before I tell you more uh, about the questions we're going to look at, let's just talk a little bit about why is it that we care uh, about economic slack. Um, so of course, economic slack represents a waste of uh, productive resources. Uh, so clearly it's something that should be limited. It's something that policies uh, should try to limit as much as possible. Um, so we'll want to, you know, we intuitively we would want st stabilization policies uh, to maintain the economy around a desirable level of slack. But furthermore, there is one specific type of economic slack that's particularly costly, and that's unemployment. So unemployment is one form of slack that's particularly uh, costly. Uh, in addition just the waste, wastefulness that it produces, unemployment genera, genera, uh, generates large additional cost to uh, society. Uh, and that's because people who are unemployed, uh, they tend to suffer from uh, lower mental health, you know, lower physical health um, than people who are uh, employed. In fact, uh, Joanne Robinson had a very nice piece uh, that she wrote just after uh, World War II on full employment and unemployment. And she said, and here I quote, the most striking aspect of unemployment is the suffering of the unemployed and their families. The loss of health and morale that follows the loss of income and occupation. And, and, that, and that, that's very true. It's not, you know, it's not just about, um, it's not as if what the unemployed person cannot produce is uh, evenly uh, spread out across everybody in society. Um, the loss of income falls squarely on the person that's unemployed. And in addition, um, there is also a, a loss of occupation. Um, and usually people, their identity is tied to their occupation. And when they lose their occupation, um, they lose their identity. And that's very costly uh, psychologically. Um, so unemployment generates very large cost um, psychological calls and, and also then, you know, due to the amount of stress that it causes, um, it also then generates large uh, health costs. Um, so that's why, you know, we care about uh, unemployment, but we care about, and we'll see uh, economic slack in general because all these things are interlinked. Um, so we should really care uh, about economic slack. It's an important um, social issue. And furthermore, there hasn't been as much progress made in understanding and tackling economic slack as other uh, macroeconomic issues. Uh, you know, growth, for instance, uh, it's something that in at least developed uh, economies is really not an issue anymore. Like there is enough consumption for everybody. There's maybe a problem of distribution of that uh, consumption across people, but um, it's it's clear that there is. Um, enough um, goods and services to go around. Um, inflation is a problem that, you know, we've made a lot of pro progress in understanding and for from the 80s to very recently, inflation was a non-issue in developed economies. Of course, the last two years have been a little bit um, different and inflation came back, but nevertheless, I think there has been a tremendous amount of progress that has been made in understanding inflation, much less so uh, on uh, economics like and you know we look at the data in the course you'll see that unemployment continues to uh, fluctuate as much as it flu uh, you know as it was uh, fluctuating uh, 50 years ago other measure of slack continue to fluctuate a lot over the business cycle so there is you know, we need to understand slack better and we need to understand and design policies to um, tackle slack uh, better and so hopefully this uh, course will contribute to that, we'll, we'll try to talk about the models we have to understand Slack and how policies should be designed uh, to tackle Slack. So what we'll do in this course, um, so as I said, we'll try to focus on models of economic Slack and we'll build uh, such models. 
and we'll di discuss how policies can be tailored to uh, tackling economic slack over the business cycle. Um, so in order, what we are going to do, so first we're going to try to uh, try to figure out why does economic slack exist at all? Uh, you know, it's not consistent at all with the idea of a Valrasian, uh, you know, competitive market. In such market, there is no slack. So we'll have to depart from the Valrasian paradigm, of course. Um, we'll try to think about how economic slack affects uh, economic life. Um, and um, so we'll also try to understand why Slack uh, varies so much over time, over the business cycle, and try to figure out how these fluctuations in Slack are related to price and wage rigidities, um, which are, of course, central kind of questions in macroeconomics, but they'll play a particularly important role here uh, in thinking about uh, Slack fluctuations. We'll try to ask what is a socially optimal uh, amount of slack and we'll see that actually it would you know generally it's not optimal to have no slack at all it's important to have a little bit of slack as a buffer we'll talk about why but the question is then if we need to have a bit of it how much of it do we actually need and so we'll think about that um, and then we'll ask how uh, should monetary policy respond to fluctuation in slack over the business cycle um, so we'll have an element of monetary economics um, and of course, monetary policy is often quite powerful, but not always. Sometimes you hit the zero lower bound on nominal interest rate and monetary policy becomes much weaker. And in that case, it's often uh, very helpful to tap uh, into the powers of a fiscal policy. And so then we're going to ask how can fiscal uh, policy, you know, uh, reduce fluctuations in Slack and how should fiscal policy be designed uh, when Slack fluctuates over the business cycle. So what should be the optimal size of a stimulus package in recession when you have a lot of unemployment and a lot of Slack? So we'll ask all these questions. Um, and finally, towards the end of the course, we'll try to think about the effectiveness of policies uh, over the business cycle. So that's a question that is quite classical in macro, trying to think about policy multipliers. So when are policy effective and when are they, when are they more effective or less effective. And we'll see that in the models of Slack, the amount of Slack is the key determinant of the effectiveness of uh, effectiveness of policies. So um, that's the plan. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy this course.